All right, this time we're working on slender, curvy, stiff objects. Uh, that's not right. Let's put that in different words. Um, okay, so this time we're making stuff to help my friend play with his meat. Uh, that's definitely not what I wanted to say. <sighs> okay, um, seriously, um, this time we're playing with boners. And we're also finishing this knife. Okay, so last year, my friend Ben Forbes hit me up and he was like, hey, let's do some butcher's knives. They're just so different. Every butcher that I've talked to has a different preference on what they like. Ben likes these six inch bendy boners. And I've heard of people that like the straight stiff boners or some people like flexible. This one is semi stiff. You can see putting a decent amount of force in there and you know, like it's pretty good. Another really tricky thing about these knives is the way they're held. With a chef's knife, you primarily see them held at the pinch grip with a boning knife. I think what Ben was telling me was like, he does hammer grip, he does pointed, he does he does the reverse grip. I don't even know what these variations of reverse grip are called, but he does all of those. And so the handle has to be comfortable for every single one of those grips. This one was the prototype that I made last year and I sent it to Ben. He's been testing it for, you know, quite a bit and it's been abused like in a good way. No real issues with the blade. There are some things I learned about the handle that I need to adjust. It's a little bit too long, cut it shorter. The guard needs to be bigger, definitely. But other than that, just make sure handle is comfortable in every grip. Make sure it is grippy. Big guard, at least for the way Ben uses it. And then just a nice blade that suits their needs. It's gonna change for every single one. So, I've got the blade pretty much almost ready to finish up before gluing. Geometry is all there. It's pretty sharp. These don't have to be super thin because you are going to be using pretty hard. Um, I know this is going to work pretty well based on the prototype that I made before, but I'm just going to chop some wood, see how the edge holds up. This is blue steel, so it's going to be pretty, actually I think pretty nice for that purpose. But yeah, I'll we'll just... And this isn't going to be a chopper, but this is just testing if the edge deflects or anything like that. So. Are you using safety glasses? Yeah, you are. Okay, good. <laughs> and I'm just trying on this knot, so I, I want to see how the edge performs under that. So pretty good. Oops, that ripped.
Because he can count to me, huh? <laughs> Not as regularly as I'd like, but a couple, couple a month. Okay, that's actually more than I thought. Okay. Here's your new baby. All right. This is my case, too. Just kidding. It's like Christmas. Like, excited, nervous. Oh, yeah. Wow. That thing's pretty fucking sexy. That looks really good. Yeah, make sure to make the guard a lot bigger this time. Yeah. Yeah, there's no slip in. Look at the fucking color on that. Heavy. I like that. Do you like more weight? I do like the weight, yeah. It's got nice. It's firm. It's not sharp. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you approach one of these? Um well. So the first thing you'll do is I'm going to take off the flank and then uh, the tender line. You, you approach it by just taking off each of the little uh, subprimals. So like this is the flank steak here. This is the sirloin flap underneath here. The tender line is in here. So I'll literally just go through and, and take every, every little muscle apart. Um, so I always start at the, at the flank and kind of work my way in. And um, so as a butcher, this is the most important part of my knife uh, on uh, a six inch boning knife. Because I use, well I use the tip, but not the very, very tip. Um, and that little bit of curve just gets you uh, in closer to the meat. Uh, and then, so these are the seams that I'm just working through here. You can see it just, all that fascia just pulls right apart. Uh, this, thing's, this thing's pretty cherry. And so normally this is done hanging up on it. You know, they call it swinging beef. This is the kidney fat right here. That's what you'll make soap out of or render it down and use it in like pie crust and stuff like that. Very dense. So I remember when I was making the prototype, I asked you about the different types of grips you use. Uh -huh. It looks like there's so many different ways you hold the knife. Yeah. Yeah, depending on what I'm doing, right? Yeah. I was I was just thinking that same thing. I was wondering, uh, as you watch me, if you were like seeing all the different, you know, because I just do it. I don't think about it. Um, but yeah, so now you know, I'm gonna grab it like that versus like that. So I'm gonna take this off. This is the artery that runs all up and down. The carotid artery goes right into that hip here, so I'm just taking that and off. Uh, this is great, man. Feels nice in my hands. I like it. So, to you, what makes a good versus a bad boning knife? Uh, I'm sure well, you can use some bad ones. Yeah. So, this is what we grew up on, and just the weight difference alone. 0.21, so four ounces versus a third of a pound. So this is about two ounces heavier. Um, and uh, I, I like the the feel of it in my hands. Yeah. I really like this part. I'm noticing, and I'm just starting to notice it. Like it really rests on my hand uh, uh, finger really well. I mean, this is nice, and this is what we had talked about with the other knife that was kind of missing is is it having that guard. So my finger didn't slip along the blade when it got kind of bloody and messy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> I don't know. So if you look at this blade, I mean, sharpening it's it's dwindled down to nothing really quick. The steel 
on this just stays sharper longer. Um, I like that a lot. And as I, uh, you know, sharpen it, it doesn't, you know, turn into a toothpick. I yeah. mean, this used to be, you know, another quarter of an inch thicker. You can see it's, you know, come down a lot. It's pretty, it was pretty much the equivalent of this blade. And now look at it, it's, you know, it's ground, ground down to nothing. Yeah. You know, a stiff blade, this is stiffer. And I like that. So what I'm noticing right now is just the way that little, what would you call that? Just I just guard, guard. Yeah. yeah, just really hangs on my finger really nicely. I like uh, definitely like the stiffness of the blade as I'm getting in here and cutting the the meat. Like it's like going through it. It's like got power and force behind it um, yeah. versus like my my heavy arm. So I think a little maybe a little bit of weight in the knife is kind of nice because the the knife is doing more of the work versus you know obviously because it's really sharp. But then just the weight of it is kind of like a little easier and then that the stiffness of the steel the strength of the steel cutting through these things is pretty pretty fucking amazing so here let's take a let's take a muscle off let's cut along some bone let's see how this goes. be great to see this thing on the uh chicago butcher show what is it what is that new show called i don't even know yeah these skills at a little mom and pop grocery store in Newport Beach, California when I was 16. A couple of, a couple of brothers taught me and I fell in love with breaking sides of beef just because I thought it was, it was cool to see. I was, you know, just a young kid and I saw a trailer full of these things and I was like, whoa, what are these guys doing? That's crazy. Um, and so I asked them to start teaching me how to do it. The rest is history. Let's see how it does in the scabbard. I don't like to leave my knives on the block. Right. It's pretty dangerous. That's good. Oh, nice. So because this is on the table, I've got to flip it up. So this is the tri tip I'm taking off. Be real careful because the sirloin is right beneath it. So I'm going to use my <laughs> big baby. So, just 
So I'm going to end the pin burn right there. Good looking beef. Right. And look at how that just like Slides right along it. So nice. You're making my life look good. <laughs> it is. It is good. This thing's. This thing's like driving a Volkswagen Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> This is my favorite piece of meat to bone out right here. This is the hip bone. And I like it just because it's curvy and, well, I mean, why do we like hips? They're sexy. Oh, and my thumb is broken right now. This thing's rocking it. What? Yeah. See how it's swollen? I mean, when you look at it on the overview. What did you do? I got kicked by a pig. Damn. So not broken, maybe sprained. I don't know. It hurts like a motherfucker, though. <laughs>
cool seeing like the, the, the systematic approach you do to yeah. break this apart. How long would you say it took you to get pretty decent at this craft? Uh, I'm getting there. I like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. That's a great thing about it is if you challenge yourself, um, it gets better all the time. Like normally on this piece of meat, uh, beef, what I would have done is, is with the saw, I would have come right through here with my bone saw and broken that down. Um, but I like to leave it whole like this because when I get in here, this is my sirloin um, and this is the which I don't tell too many people is my favorite cut because there's not so much of it available. Yeah. Um, but so a few years back, you know, I would have just with a saw come right through this and left it as is. But now I've, I've completely cut it comp uh, totally different and um, start to utilize some of these weird muscles that nobody else does. And, you know, that's why I can say like after 25 years, I've gotten better in the last you know, a couple years, way better than I was, you know, 10 years ago. So 30 yeah. years of experience, you can say, yeah, I know so much. I only got 30 years, but I think the guys that are the best are like still figuring it all out, challenging myself every day and trying to get better and better at it. Do a lot of butchers do it similar to you or is it process all? They are. There's a lot of butchers nowadays that, um, because the trade is, is awesome again, uh, when I got into it 30 years ago, it was a dying, like the guys were telling me, you're getting into a dying trade that's not going to be around much longer. And it truly was like, and that's the art of breaking down whole animals. They're like, nobody's, nobody's doing it anymore. Uh, you're not going to find it. Uh, but now, you know, there's butchers that have only been doing it for three or four years that are doing things that I was doing 30 years ago. So, yeah. So now the trade is, is very much alive and well, and I'm super excited about that. It's so crazy because there's so many parallels to it with knife cooking. When I first started knife cooking, yeah. I mean, it was a much smaller group, and now it's like, it's huge. Yeah. So is your craft growing in that same way, like a yeah. lot of people really getting into it? Uh-huh. Doctors, lawyers, what? engineers, designers. That's so fascinating. People are sick of the cubicle, and they want to they wanna come and do all this. how this baby handles some bone. So I actually made this boner out of some pretty like hard to get steel. Yeah. It's pretty desirable for Japanese knives and a lot of people can't get it in the US. Yeah. So it should hold up pretty well. Nice. Like, it's supposed to be really wear resistant, tough. Okay. Not We're done. Much. What? Yeah, that's it. That's this this is all it's all broken down now. We've got all of our muscles separated. So you've got your New York strip or T-bone and porterhouse. The filet mignon that was part of that goes right there. And then, so I mean, I've obviously got to further process this down into steaks and whatnot, but I mean, you can see how quick this, this can go. How many muscles do we have here? Some big bones. Oh, is that filming? Yeah. <laughs> That's rad. So thanks for making me a yeah. better maker. Yeah, man. Thanks for making me a great tool for my trade.